and welcome back to our channel guys this is Brianna and today I wanted to show you guys a little bit about what I'm gonna be doing in the kitchen today we are going to be doing bone broth both turkey bone broth and beef bone broth and I'm gonna be making homemade bread <laughs> we're just gonna have a really busy day of in the kitchen and this is, week has just been so crazy We've been out of the house for appointments and running around and errands and today I'm just gonna get the home stuff done. It has uh, been a wild ride, but we're gonna get these things done. The turkey bone broth is from Thanksgiving. Our car goes from Thanksgiving. I have put it in Ziploc bags and stuck it in the freezer and now I'm pulling it out and gonna actually get some bone broth done. We are completely out of bone broth, so it is at the point of we can't have soup unless we you know, buy store-bought or make our own. So my goal today is to stock us back up and then probably maybe tonight or Saturday because we have appointments tomorrow, I will can the bone broth as well. And so then we'll be able to have shelf-stable bone broth. All right, I'm gonna show you what we're doing. I chopped up some carrots and some celery and then I have my bones. Here's my beef bone. And in here, in my, I have two Instant Pots, so my beef bones are gonna go in my small Instant Pot, and my big um, turkey is gonna go in my big Instant Pot. So we have the turkey carcass in here. I put a bunch of water in it. I'm gonna add some more water to the max line here. And then I just threw in a few handfuls of the vegetables. I'm trying to see if I can find the max line. Okay, so max line is right here, so <laughs> that might be a problem. I need to try to shove this down in further or take some of the bones out. So I'll get to that and then get it started. Next is gonna be the beef bones. I have all these beef bones, like literally two boxes full of beef bones that my neighbor was so kind to gift us with. They got a half a cow and all of their bones they just gave to us so we could make some beef broth, which is gonna be amazing so we can pressure can them and stock our shelves. But I'm going to return her a little gift and give her back some beef bone broth and so um, I'm gonna start working on this now. It's been a few months of having them, so I need to get this done and get it out of my freezer. Um, but yeah, we're gonna start this beef broth and get the process going. One last thing, I almost forgot I add a little bit of salt to both of the Instant Pots, so quickly I was able to add that before this one actually pressurized. So salt, just by eye. On my Instant Pot, I know this is not the newest model, I going, I'm gonna do pressure high, and then I'm gonna do three hours. Okay, so three, and then I'm gonna set my valve to closed and I'm good to go. All right, we're done with our time and this is what is in there. So I will now sift this out and just get the broth into my jars right over here. So I'm going to wash these really quick because I haven't prepped these jars yet. Just gonna wash them real quick and get them ready for some broth. And here's the beef broth, same idea. Looks good. Okay, it's been a couple days. I had these bone broths in the fridge. I just pulled them out to kind of come to room temperature. I really kind of wish I would have stuck it out all in a big bowl or something and then I could heat it all up at one time. I know that's kind of the way you're supposed to do it so it can be at the same temperature as the water pressure can so you can prevent breakage. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let these guys come to room temperature and then I'm going to fill my pressure canner up with water and like just regular temp room temperature water and then put everything in there at one time and then it all come to temperature at the same time. Ooh, I think that will work. <laughs> Anyways, I've got the, the jars 
filled and we're gonna put, I took off the fat, as much fat that raised the top as I could. Then I'm gonna wipe down the tops of the jars with a rag with vinegar on it to cut the grease down and help the seal. So that is what I'm gonna do now and then get everything ready to start pressure canning. Hey, as usual, it is late. <laughs> just got the kids to bed and I'm pulling out the last, or just finished the last batch of bone broth. So I have five over here on the counter that are done and cooling and five more inside of the pressure canner. So excited to be able to get more shelf stable food. It is just fun. I told Scott, I was like, this like makes me giddy to like get food prepped for the pantry and and it's like long lasting, you know, food. So anyways, thanks for following me along today as we canned bone broth. And I will start bringing uh, you guys along as I learn to can more things. Bone broth is one of the few things I've done. So <laughs> I, um, I want to get into like doing soups and like beef, um, like beef stew and stuff like that. So anyways, if you've canned something recently, drop a comment below and let us know what you have been canning. Thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Okay, next morning, look at all of the jars and the reason why you don't use jars that had been in the fridge before. So this was a little bit, I guess, too cold and it just split right in the, like a clean cut right on the bottom, the wildest thing. So all of that contents got wasted inside of the pressure canner. So it is important to go ahead and heat up your broth in a pot and then put it into sterile jars and do it that way so that you don't get jar breakage. So next time I will take the extra step to do that because that was a waste. <laughs> but we do have all of these and I'm happy. Happy that we have these for the shelf.